شهر الخير هل علينا حقق يا ربي أمانينا وحبابنا منتظرينا عالسفرة مجتمعين كل عام وانتو بسعادة My name is Faisal Al-Baghir, I'm a Sudanese journalist and human rights defender. I call for justice for Noura. My name is Hala Ibrahim and I demand justice for Noura. I'm Khalid Sanayadim from Khartoum. I'm Ghuri Shizan from Sudan. Justice for Noura. Noura, take heart. We got you. My name is Abdukhalaq. I demand justice for Noura. I'm from Tanya, from Kenya. We're going to call Noura and we're going to call her justice for Noura. My name is Zakaria Mohamed. My name is Faisal Ahmed. And we demand justice for Noura. Hi, my name is Ramla Ahmed and I demand justice for Noura. My name is Razan Jubara. My name is Lina Gubara. And we demand justice for Noura. My name is Hodan Khalif and I demand justice for Noura. I'm from Patricia and I'm going to call her justice for Noura. We demand justice for Noura. Hi honey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariam Taib, I live in Taib Bajabir and today we're covering the Justice for Noura protest here in Nairobi, Kenya. And here are two of the organizers and a representative from Amnesty International and they're going to talk to us a little bit about what happened today. Why did you organize this protest? Okay, we organized this protest because we were very encouraged to just speak up for injustice. Noura has been disappointed by so many people, she's been abandoned by too many people. The law let her down, her family let her down when they disowned her, but we won't do that because we will speak up for injustice and we will give her a voice that she was not privileged enough to. Not only that, it's also basic human rights to stand up for Noura. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, it doesn't matter if you're a man, it doesn't matter which, gender, which uh, religion you're from. It's about basic human rights. So as a human being, I feel as though everybody is obliged to stand up for Noura. And what brought Amnesty International here? Like, What was so important about Noura's story and what happened that brought your attention to it? Of course, as she said, it's all about human rights, but also Amnesty has a very special place for death penalty, so you can't just go killing people, and for this case, Nura is a very special case, because she was raped, so you cannot inflict death penalty to a rape victim, it's wrong, and although they say they were married, marriage, marriage is not consent for married to I think we really all just want to really, we want everybody around the world to recognize what marital rape actually is um, because a lot of countries don't recognize marital rape um, and so you could be in a situation where you feel like you're completely safe, this is your so-called husband, but um, you're, in a, you're in a situation where you're completely vulnerable. So, and it really wasn't her husband because she had she no consent. Say, exactly. And even if it was her husband, you know, we need to realize, if we don't realize marital rape is the time that it is, we will never find a reason for Noura to be defending herself it's because if it's not a crime, then she had nothing to defend herself against. And only he wasn't, she wasn't just raped by one person who's supposedly her husband. He's not, he's a stranger to her still. And when he ended up calling with his relatives, his brother, or like whatever he did, that really stripped her of her dignity and humiliated her so much and caused her to be in a state of trauma that she could not handle. Could I get a take on all, from all three of you on the statement that if you're married to a man, he has a right over you, so he has conjugal rights over you. Just immediately, what's your first thought when you hear that statement? Just because we are, mar we are married, or between we are married, it doesn't mean you get it without my consent. It's a it's a 50-50. If I don't want it, nay. I think it takes you back to the hashtag, my body, my choice. Yeah. Um, so regardless of whether you're my husband or not, it doesn't matter. Like, if I'm not comfortable to do something, then again, my body, my choice. So that's what it goes by. And I feel like if you go ahead without really consent, it's kind of like you're objectifying the woman so much, making her like an object. Because if it's an object, like you can pick up the phone, you can throw something, you can do whatever you want. And now if you go to your wife and do what you want to do without her consent, that also means that you're treating her the way that she's not supposed to be treated. Yeah. Like and an object rather than a person. Definitely. I think many men... Are or many just people in general, they really mistake marriage, like they think of it as ownership rather than guardianship. Exactly. You should be taking care of your wife, you don't own her, you don't do whatever you want to do. Well, thank you so much to all of you for organizing this, for coming and giving coverage to this or giving support to this. 
we all think that everybody here is like-minded. We might have some views that differ, but I feel like we all agree on the fact that Noura has rights over her own body. She had a right to consent to that marriage which she was not given. And we're all here to stand up for Noura because Noura represents all women that are who face such things. Even here in Kenya, where con- uh, marital rape is not seen as illegal, women here in Kenya probably go through this and we're all silenced because of the society doesn't accept that this is a wrong. And I feel like this is a really good step forward because we might just be here making noise. Some people might call it that, but we're showing other women that it is okay for you to speak up if something like this happened to you. We're not going to judge you, we're not going to harm you, and we're trying, this is one step into destroying rape culture. Because what's happening to Nure is that she's been made, she's the victim and she's being the one who's being made into the villain. She's the one being judged, exactly. 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 So thank you so much to all of you and thank you to everybody who came. Why are you here? Well, being Sudanese, I'm Sudanese by um, nationality and Kenyan at the same time, and um, I'm a woman as well, and not far off from Nura's age, to be honest, like young adults, and I think it's absolutely disgusting, it's a mess, I don't think in any way or form she should be, she should have to go through these things, she's currently sitting probably in a jail cell at the moment, nobody's even thought about what she's feeling, the trauma that she's had to go through um, after, you know, what's just happened, so that's why I'm here, and I think it's for a good cause. Um, I feel like I can really relate to Noura because not only is she Muslim, she's a woman, but she's also African and from Sudan. Um, so I just feel as though Noura has not only been abandoned by her family, but she's also been abandoned by the law. So the least that I could do is support her today, and so I fully stand with Noura. I'm here because there are many more women than Noura. This is more than Noura. There are millions of faceless women out there and a great percentage of young girls who are forced into marriages, and we need to stand for them now. اسمي فيصل الباقر انا صحفي وناشط حقوق انسان انا هنا للدفاع عن حق نورا في الحياه العداله لنورا الحريه لنورا نورا ليست هي الشابه السودانيه الوحيده التي تعاني من هذه القوانين الجائره لا بد من تعديل القوانين لنضمن ان القوانين تتوائم مع الدستور السوداني وتتوائم مع الالتزامات السودانيه مع التزامات حقوق الانسان السودانيه العداله لنورا الحريه لنورا ونحن سنظل ندافع عن حقوق الانسان، انا سعيد جدا ان اعداد كبيره من الاجيال الجديده من مدافعين حقوق الانسان ومدافعين حقوق الانسان هم الان في ساحه النضال من اجل حقوق الانسان، من اجل الكرامه، من اجل الحريه ومن اجل حقوق الانسان، العداله لنورا، العداله لنورا، العداله لنورولا والمحاكمه العادله لنورا. I heard about the story of Nora online and uh, doing some research about it, it seemed like Nora isn't just one person. She represents many other people who don't get the opportunity to have such coverage on the news. We live in an era where other things that don't really mean life or death capture the news and they get all the coverage, whereas when someone's life hangs in the balance, there's still no one there to tell the story. Um, throughout the weeks uh, and uh, months that people have been campaigning for her, we have been campaigning for her, we have seen little to no response to our campaigns until very recently and it really speaks a lot about the world we live in today the world we live in today where um, a royal wedding takes up most of the coverage and it's more newsworthy than the uh, life and death of a girl so that's why I'm here today I want to give a voice to the voiceless I want to give a voice to Lenora and those who she represents and a lot it's not just us a lot of people do and uh, we are due to uh, fight for Nora Justice for Nora Don't for me right now I'm not doing anything Okay so here we have two Sudanese men who have agreed to talk to us for a little bit and I want you guys just to hear what their future dreams for their daughters are to allow you to understand that this movement isn't about demonizing men, it's not about demonizing Sudanese men, it's just about getting justice where justice is due. So let's all work together, men, women, Sudanese, non-Sudanese, we can all work together to make a better future for our daughters. So what are your dreams for your daughters? بالنسبه لي احلامي لبنتي ولبنات كل السودان انه يكون في عدل في السودان انه يكون يعني انه الناس تطلع من البوكس بتاع المفاهيم المغلوطه دي وتمشي لمفاهيم المفاهيم طيب بالنسبه لي انا طبعا لما اشوف الحاجه دي يعني الحاجه دي ما كانت صح والناس ضغطوا على البيت دي يعني دي كلها حاجات غلط ودي ناتجه عن يعني ممكن نقول اعداد غلط او حاجات زي دي فما علينا لكن ان شاء الله العداله لنور وان شاء الله وان شاء الله نسمع عنه بالضبط بعدين بدي اضيف حاجه انه بالنسبه للبنات السودانيات عندهم الحاجه انه ما يستغلوا العاطفه يعني انتم ما انتم ما العاطفه انتم عندكم حقكم انتم انتم عندكم حقوكم يعني ما يستغلوا العاطفه العاطفه بتاعت الناس الثانيين 
عشان انه عشان دي دي يعني في النهايه حقها صح يا عداله يعني فما ما ما دارين عاطف ناخذ الموضوع بالقوه يعني ان شاء الله والعداله ان شاء الله حتكون لي ان شاء الله ان شاء الله